Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. A little Pearl of dance for you there. And today we're going to be talking more chicken trades. I did a live stream. I did a video about it already. You got to go check it out. I did the ones, teams that I thought off the top of my head. Then in my live stream, which you can be part of, uh, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show there from 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern, I did uh sent it out to everybody and they asked me they gave me some teams that they thought might be in so i thought what the heck we'll take a look at those as well see the likelihood is of it uh in case you don't know the arizona coyote has uh put out through the media that they are looking at possible trades for jake tricker now so one thing I wanted to mention here, and I didn't mention this in my previous video about this, sometimes teams do this sort of thing to see what's out there, what people will be willing to trade in really actually wanting to trade someone else or just wanting to know the field as they keep on going. Also, like in the Coyotes case, they're probably looking as well as into who would be willing to give up that first round pick next year and the year after because that's really what they're after did a scorched down rebuild they got four first round picks already i'm sure they'll just keep on accumulating 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 it's possible but we'll take a look at the uh couple of the articles that talked about chikrin and then we'll look at some of the teams that in my live stream people brought up as possibilities as well Highly recommend you check my previous video where I talk about some of the teams, such as the New York Rangers, that may have been in on it, Philadelphia Flyers. There was a couple. Go check it out. Okay. Um, Let's go look. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Steel Flyers. It's the best. There, I said it. Um, You got to check it out if you like all four major sports and things involving those four major sports. All, All teams, by the way. Don't let the name fool you. All teams in the four major sports. Uh, Let's take a look at that video, or video, the uh, article. All right. This is in Pro Hockey Rumors, written by Gavin Lee. Really respectable guy. Uh, Respected in, in, uh, as far as rumors and stuff like that, I, I have never seen him throw something out that didn't have something to it. Uh, that was just talking straight out of his butt. So um, the in the offseason, the Arizona Coyote made it clear that they would be going through a full rebuild. That's true. I actually did a video about that as well. You might want to check that out. They traded a whole bunch of uh, guys like Larson, Garland, and Dvorak. Uh, the only player that seemed untouchable through it all was Jacob Chikrin, and I thought so too as well. However, I did say that if Jacob Chikrin decided he wanted to move on in his career, which I don't blame him for, by the way. It's been rough in Arizona, and now you're looking at probably five, six years before they're going to be relevant again. Easy to see him go, you know what? I made up my mind. I think I I would like to move on. Elliot Friedman of Sportsnet wrote in his last 32 Thoughts column that the Coyotes are gauging the massive market, gauging the market on Chikram. Though the ask is massive. Yes, of course the ask is ma- ask is massive. And we'll look at the why in a second. The, o- the one thing I asked was, was there a trade request? And I was told multiple times the answer to that question was no. However, I do think the Coyotes know that it isn't easy for Chikrin. Okay, so look, they talked about it there. I didn't talk about it in my last one. There wasn't a request, but they're getting the idea that maybe it is the case. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Even if there wasn't a credit work, if there was a request, quite often they're going to respect the uh, player and they're not going to mention it in the media or anything like that. They'll take the heat themselves and move on. So that's very possible too. Uh, then when he asked Armstrong for a comment, he refused. And that was pretty much all they were saying that he had talked to them uh, and it certainly leaned towards the possibility that he was out there looking to uh, make a trade. Um, So I don't blame him and we have another one here as well 
where this was talking about will would the Oilers be in on Jacob Chikrin. I talked about that on my last video, whether the Oilers might be in and what they would want to give. I'd highly recommend you go check that out. But it's again here talking about how Mr. Parsons, Jim Parsons from uh, the hockey writers, that Chikrin would be available. All right, we got it down that Chikrin would be available. It seems like the Chikrin would be available. Let's look at Jacob Chikrin. Why is he such? Why does he even matter? Well, he's 23 years old. And from the time he was, what, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18. 18 years old, this guy's playing bit, uh, significant minutes for the Coyotes. 20 points in 68 games. A little bit of a uh, same per, same point percentage the year after. Uh, er, and and uh, tw at 20, he was making doing 20, 21, 26. Now he got 41. And a slip down this year because they have a super really bad team. Look at this, 18 goals. And pull up analytics if you're an analytics person. He's sitting like at 83% war, which is fantastic for a young player. On top of that, check this out. He has, he's making 4.6 this year. One, two, three more years at 4.6 million for a guy who's already playing top minutes. Uh, from people I've talked to and from watching him, which I've watched a lot, I think he could possibly have a Norris in him. He's kind of ekblad -ish -y. sort of like Ekblad. Do you think this guy's going to bring in a haul? I would say so, for sure. It's hard to really say what he would bring in because I don't think we've seen a stud defenseman that available at this age, at this contract, for a very long time, if ever. All I know is I'm pretty sure every t almost every team in the league will be calling about him. And if you've got that kind of leverage, because they don't even really have to trade him at the moment, if they don't want to, they can wait as long, they can wait a long time on it. They can wait till they get the right deal. You got the trade deadline coming up. Players or teams are going to be salivating over a guy like this just for that alone. So I said, I did a bunch of teams already. These were some of the teams in my live stream that I do that came up as what they would like to know if they could be in on something like this. Uh, Seattle Kraken. And would they be interested in Chikrin? For sure they would be interested in Chikrin. No doubt about it. This is a rebuilding team. This is a defenseman you could view as rebuilding around. The issue is, what would it cost them? I can almost assure you it's going to cost them their first round draft pick this year. Maybe, maybe, maybe not this one and next year both, but either or. Okay. And they really would have to assess what they can get in that spot. I mean, they could, this could be a lottery pick. I, if you look at my videos I did last year or keep on watching all the way through here, you're going to see the kind of, uh, package that is going to get somebody like Chikrin. From what I've understood on Twitter and stuff like that, it's going to take two very good prospects, uh, probably a good solid player, and a first round pick at least. Something of that nature. So here's the problem with Seattle. They're a new team. They don't really have solid first round, first solid prospects. Uh, Matthew Beneers, you want to all of a sudden throw trade Matthew, Matthew Beneers? He's been putting up really good numbers in college, I believe. 22 points in 20 games for a 19-year-old in college is really good. Now, he's got an incredibly good team around him there in Michigan. So those numbers are kind of a little bit skewed because usually you don't have a powerhouse team like that to play with. But... Um, he's still projected to be like a Felino type guy. And Jacob Chikrin could have, and I've heard the words, Norris potential. Okay. So maybe Beneers is somebody they say, yeah, we really like him, but a Norris potential defenseman, 
veneers in our first this year? Because let's face it, if you're giving up your first this year, isn't what you are looking for with that pick exactly what your current is? And he already is that. So you're not rolling the dice wondering what this pick is going to be like. You already know what he's going to be like. So that's steep. Please agree. I don't think this is like they would just be like, oh, easy. Okay, here's been years in our first round draft pick next year. Absolutely not. This would be something that they would be humming and hawing about quite a bit. But they could throw a roster player in as well. Um, I, although I don't think Arizona is really going to be, you know, salivating over anybody they could throw in. They could throw in Vince Dunn and, uh, as Vince Dunn has really been – okay this year and last year he didn't have a great year it's possible they could throw in Vince Dunn to say hey here you go I'll I'll butter this up with Vince Dunn see what you can do with him Arizona's got all the time in the world to work on a kid who's got a lot of talent but for some reason hasn't been able to put it all together here right away uh maybe maybe not Beneers maybe just the ah, it's got to be Beneers it's got to be Beneers in a first and I'll tell you why as we move on so Seattle fans Probably I think you're going to be like, no way am I giving up our first next year. But think about it. Isn't If you knew you were going to get a stud top two defenseman like Chikrin next year in the draft, if you knew it for sure, you would pick that guy, right? Do you know for sure that's what you're going to get with that pick? No. So it is a difficult decision, but I think it's a decision they would definitely look at. If you look at my Detroit Red Wings and New York Rangers uh, video from last last uh, the last video I did, you'll see that Seattle's going to have a tough time bringing a package to, to compete with something like that. That's assuming they're both in. I can't see how they're not, but you never know, I suppose. St. Louis Blues. I think they would be hungry for a guy like this. This is a team that's trying hard not to rebuild. OK, um, they would like to get younger, but they don't want to do like a rebuild, rebuild thing. So. Uh, first things first, their first round pick would be definitely gone. Either this year or next year. I would if I'm Arizona, I'm trying to get this 2000, these two thousand twenty three picks as much as I possibly can. But they would certainly be gone and they do have one. So that you've got that and maybe a second next year if you're going to do that. I think next year's draft is better than this year's. So, whoops, what am I doing here? OK. Here's a th- Here's something that might happen. This came up on my live stream, by the way, St. Louis. This is a good one. I don't think they're going to be interested in Tory Krug. Um, Miko, uh, Nico M- Mikola would have some interest. I don't think he's going to definitely not be replacing Chikrin, but he's a left defenseman, and I do believe they could definitely use that left defenseman to go with Krug. They don't, that Krug could be your top lefty. Chikrin would actually maybe even be better than Krug. So you would have Chikrin and Pareko. Oh, excuse me. That would be absolutely beautiful. Krug and Falk seem to be jellying well together. And then Scandella and Bertuzzo. Plus, Perunovic coming up, who is playing fantastic. You, that would be an absolutely amazing defense for St. Louis. Now, St. Louis is going to have to make the cap space work here. So what I thought since they brought up St. Louis is what about a three-way trade involving Tarasenko, who says he wants still wants to be traded anyways, right? Since he still wants to be traded, as it is, you don't 29 points in 31 games. He's crushing it this year, but... If he apparently he keeps on saying, I still want traded, I want traded, I want traded, I want traded. Send Tarasenko to Arizona. He said he doesn't care what team. However, Arizona can use Tarasenko for a package of other players. Now what? You're going to be looking at a guy like Robert Thomas, I'm pretty sure. They're not going to be interested in a 30-year-old Brady and Braden Shen. Uh, so you got Robert Thomas, Mikola, 
a first round pick, and I know it's going to take more than that. Because I'm positive the Rangers in Detroit won't be able to do a package greater than that. Um, the thing that's helping this deal out, though, is that if you send, if they can work out a deal with another club who really respect, who really believes in Tarasenko that he's going to be healthy and stuff, the package they can bring back for Tarasenko may make that all you need. But you may have to throw like a, a coast. Coastkin, Coastin, Clem Coastin, or something like that in, in the deal as well. Uh, who I really liked at that draft, by the way. I thought they got a good steal on that. Or somebody more. We're trying to stay away from neighbors here. Like, let's pretend they don't say neighbors. <laughs> let's pretend that they don't mention Jake Neighbors because I love, 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 love. I'm trying to work out something where Jake Neighbors isn't part of the deal. Love, love, love. You know, maybe to. Tor Pachenko, somebody like that in the deal as well. Nikita Alexandrov, who had a really good World Juniors and is doing okay elsewhere uh, in the KHL this year, maybe something like that. But it's going to take a big package of players, St. Louis Blues fans, no doubt about it. If you've watched Jacob Chikrin over the last couple of years, even if you're not an analytics person, although his analytics to me were match the eye test, the guy is something else. Okay, let's work. Let's go for Florida. Florida was another one that came up. And I still think that they could use help on D. I agree. Uh, I think their D's not bad. And this is tough because they got so many people on the injured reserve right now. In fact, look at they have no their their defense is basically non existent because they have COVID and all that stuff like that. But Ekblad and Forsling, Forsling has been so underrated so far. However, I think if a de- deal were to come up here, Forsling probably would have to be involved. You've got Weger for sure. Lucas Carlson has been looking really good this year. Um, Ekblad. And, you know, Nudavara, guys like that. Forslane has been really good, but is he in the category of a guy like Chikrin? I'd say no. No, like Chikrin has a possibility of being another Ekblad. So you've got an Ekblad with an Ekblad and Mackenzie Weger, who is absolutely fantastic. Your top three now has just become amazing. Um, so I think Forsling may would he's young enough, he may be have to be part of that deal. And then Florida's Florida's a guy, a team that really has the, the Gregory De, Denisenko first round pick. Owen oh, Tippett has been used probably where he in the third and fourth lines where he probably isn't going to thrive. So as much as they love him, I think Owen Tippett could be part of that deal. Owen Tippett, Forsling, Denisenko in a first, something like that would be maybe in the ballpark if you look at some of the other deals I've looked at. But you're getting a stud defenseman. Who has been t- has Norris talk written on him? That has already put up great points in the NHL. In fact, eighteen goals, and is on a killer contract at four point six for the next three years. Teams are going to be all over it. Okay, next, Los Angeles Kings. And uh, again, the, there's they have a little less cap issues, but. Uh, they do have a small defense. And if I talk to LA fans, they say that the biggest thing they need to solve is their defense. Um, the first, if I'm Arizona, the first player I'm going for is Bjorn Fort right now. And I think he could be in that conversation. Um, he probably doesn't have the offensive capabilities of Chikrin down the road, but I think he, yeah, I think he's going to be for sure a very solid shutdown defenseman. I'm looking at Bjorn Fort. Um, I'm looking at Turcotte. I'm looking at a first round pick for sure next year. And possibly like Elias Anderson or 
uh, something like that. Like it's going to be a big package. Bjornfort, get down here. You got Velarde's. The thing about LA is they have the package to do this. I'm not sure Gabriel Velarde is going to tip the scales too much because he struggled so much, but you could throw him in there. He struggled a lot so far in his young tenure. Uh, so Gabriel Velarde, let's get the deal going here. Gabriel Velarde, Quinn Byfield, or not Byfield. Uh, they definitely wouldn't want to put Byfield in there. Turcott, Bjornfort in the first. That could do it. I could see that doing it. Turcott projects to be maybe a second liner, but a very good third. Uh, you might want to throw, instead of him, put Kapari. You may have to keep on adding here. If you look at, when you have like five or six teams that are like thirsting over a player, somebody may end up completely overpaying for him. So uh, I did this video to kind of say, these are the packages you're looking at. Kupari, Bjornfort, Velarde in a first. You willing to do that? That You're probably going to think I'm absolutely out of my mind for a package like that. Take the first away. Maybe you still think that. But I think this is in the area of what you're looking for, looking a team to give up for a guy. If they believe, like many people believe, he's going to be a Norris-level defenseman. You think about what you got now. All of a sudden... When Dowdy is back, you've got a true number two, number one even, defenseman to play with uh, Dowdy. And Matt Wall, Michael Anderson, Sean Walker, you got a solid D, but you've got now a for sure two defensemen. Great, very good defensively, excellent offensively, young. He's on a killer contract. It's going to cost a lot. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, and that, this I knew this one was going to come up. I have a feeling they're going to have a pretty difficult time. I think it's going to take Nylander. Possibly, Nylander straight up might do it. If they believe in, if they like Nylander like I do, I think Nylander has 90-point potential down the road. He's 25 years old. He hasn't even hit his stride yet, and he's already a point-of-game winner. Now, you can make an argument, will he be that on a team like Arizona? Probably not, but he still has that potential. And as they bring in players, he could definitely add to that, no doubt about it. Um, I think it'll take Nylander. It depends how much they like him, maybe even plus, but... Would you be willing to do it for a stud? The, the, Toronto's been looking for that stud defenseman for a long time. Um, Muzzin's not getting any younger. And yes, really, you ultimately, you're looking more for a righty. But Norris-level defensemen are hard to find, man. So you'd have to go out and find, get cap space to find another right defenseman. But you already got a stud one on the left side now. Your left side is taken care of. You don't need to worry about it. Time to get righties. Tell me what you say, Toronto fans. Would you be willing to do something like that? Finally, Washington. And, the, and this was – this. I I had a feeling Washington would come up here too because, I mean, they always love stud defense. Big players that can play hard and play like him. I just I, – I, I don't know if it's feasible that they would be able to make a deal like that. They don't really have a lot of prospects. Um, it would have to be a three-way deal of some kind. And like Kuznetsov, and then they trade Kuznetsov somewhere else because he had a good season. But I brought it up because there was a lot of argument about it about them being part of this. Like they, people were saying Hendricks Lapierre, basically anybody, anything, any prospects that they have that are worthwhile. Alex Eve, um, Malenstein and Leeson both showed pretty well up in the NHL while they were be there, while they were there. Maybe you could throw that in, but I just don't think they're going to be able to compete with a lot of the teams out there that have what they have. Tell me what you think, Washington Capitals fans. Would they be able to compete? Am I not seeing something there? Uh, that's my full 42. That's what I have for 
the Chikrin Trade Extravaganza. Sign yourself up, sub up, hit the like button, why don't you? Huh? Sub up and come watch, come talk to me about all this and more. The NHL Pearl O Wisdom Show, 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.